Guys episode too. So we tour different frag tanks and uh, aquaculture facilities. Um, obviously, I'm not an aquaculture facility, I'm a hobbyist. Um, this is my frag tank here. It's 36 by 20 by 24 tall. It holds about 40 gallons. Uh, presently got a whole mess of corals in here and it's part of my main system which is about 700 gallons in total. Uh, my main display has a wide variety of corals ranging from soft corals, LPS corals, um, and SPS corals. As corals grow in that tank I've been taking little clippings and turning them into frags and putting them into here. Um, also as I get new frags from other people um, or events. Uh, they've been going in here as kind of a holding tank, observation tank, um, and some of them are obviously ending up back in the main display while others will go into a new tank that I set up in my house a few months ago. Um, in the meantime, let me show you what I've got. Alright, so welcome back. Um, taking a little walk through the frag tank here. As you can see, we've got that very big hammer colony. Well, it's a chunk uh, or a bunch of chunks of my big hammer colony. I've been selling off a bunch of them and this is what I'm left with. Which is still well over a hundred heads and I've probably sold more than half of them. Um, looking forward to getting these out so I can put more corals in here. And on the upper rack is where I've got pretty much all my SPS frags. There's a whole wide range and I'll be honest I'm pretty terrible um, with the coral names. So, you know, getting the names out of me is going to be pretty tough. As you see, I've got a lot of color in there. We've actually turned the light color up, the Kelvin up on these lights, so as to uh, not have to deal with white balancing. Um, but there's a pretty wide variety of SPS in there, some Montepra, some Macropora, some uh, uh, Looney Tunes, whatever that thing is there. I forgot Looney Tunes something or other. It's been really, really colorful. Um, that green thing with blue polyps, which we just passed, um, is one of my favorites actually, and it's been spreading real well over the rock. Uh, a couple little nubs of strawberry shortcake. The other strawberry shortcake frags I had, I just moved into the big tank the other day. Uh, but as you can see, there's a pretty wide range of uh, corals in there, and you know, we'll keep adding on to that once we move out some of these hammer corals. Fortunately, this light color doesn't do much justice. As I said, we crank the spectrum up in order to compensate for the blue lighting so as to not have to white balance. And it doesn't really do the corals much justice. And that uh, orange one there is something George, Jim told me to call the orange thing. I like the name. We'll just call it the orange thing. Fortunately, um, our next frag guide tours will be to facilities that specialize in coral frags and obviously they'll know a lot more when it comes to the names of these corals than I do or even Jim does. Um, we're learning just like our viewers are. In 60 seconds with speed. We continue the Acapora Tenuous series with another reef wrap coral, the RR Angry Bird Tenuous. Before we describe that morph, however, we will begin to discuss some controversial aspects of these colorful tenuous corals. Exotic tenuous pigments are most intense under royal blue LEDs. Under broader spectrums, the pigments can visually wash out. Light from the royal blue LEDs can also interfere with observing fluorescent pigments. For example, blue blocking camera filters can actually help capture the uh, colorful pigments. These characteristics have caused some controversies. The RR Angry Bird Tenuous has light blue to green colored branches. Coralites are blue with yellow to turquoise inner walls. Polyps are red with blue tentacle tips. The exotic colors that we are discussing in this Tenuous series are caused by specific fluorescing pigments. Corals can also contain reflecting pigments that have very little fluorescence. The pink Pacillopora, Stylopora, and Seriatopora shown here all contain reflecting red pigments. Illumination with some reddish light will maximize their visual pigment intensity. We hope to cover many other tenuous color morphs in future episodes. Please visit my websites, corefarmersmarket.com and reeffarmers.com. That was 60 Seconds with Steve.
Reap Hobbyist Magazine believes that our hobby, our fellow hobbyists, and the animals in our care are best served by the free distribution of quality information. Reap Hobbyist Magazine provides hobbyists with critical husbandry information with an emphasis on marine ornamental breeding efforts. Reef Hobbyist Magazine is available for free in local fish stores across the country or you can subscribe at www.reefhobbyistmagazine.com. Well, welcome back to LA Frag Guys episode 2. Uh, we're at my house. Uh, so, Frag Tank is fed by the main system. There's a manifold under the main display that sends water over to this tank. Uh, then it drains back through this pipe here, uh, back to the sump. So it's part of a 700 gallon system. I use a GHL Mitra LX70-206 for the lighting on this display. Uh, I have a pair of Tunzi power heads in here that are controlled by a Proflux controller, GHL Proflux controller. It also monitors pH and other stuff in there, um, conductivity as well as ORP. Uh, so we'll take a look at the lighting over the main display here, because in this part of the main system, My light rack right now, I have a combination of GHL Mitra 7206s and Kessels. I'm transitioning over to the GHL Mitras, so right now the Kessels are on, but I'm working my way off of the Kessels onto the new GHL, so right now I am running both. Below the tank, um, start over here. This is where water drains from the main system. My protein skimmer, um, water flows through the main sump into the below tank refugium. Um, that refugium is my return section, so the return pump pulls water from the main system and through a manifold sends water over there uh, to the frag tank. I also run UV on this primarily for water clarification. Carbon reactors and GFO reactors um, are also in place. Um, there's also automatic water change on the system, so five gallons is changed out every day um, to help keep maintain water quality. Um, let's see, other equipment. Uh, we'll take a walk outside where I have my calcium reactor and the rest of the life support. Alright, so we're outside in the life support shed. Um, this is my calcium reactor. It is fed by a master flex pump, which is a medical grade dosing pump. It allows me to really maintain a constant flow through the calcium reactor and adjust it down to one tenth a milliliter per minute. Um, obviously my CO2 tank and regulator. Um, my automatic water change controller. This is my RODI holding tank and my salt water and mixing tank. I use a Spectra Pure liter meter, one to one, ultra high efficiency unit. We're in a drought here, so wasting as little water as possible is important. Uh, my top off pump, uh, this is one of the metering bins for the automatic water change system. So one gallon in, one gallon out. The other metering bin is underneath the main display. Um, and that's for wastewater. This is for new salt water. And it drains back through the wall into the sump. And the other one pumps out and then drains through the wall into a pipe here that goes out to the street. So it's my life support shed, um, and uh, this shed is also controlled by my aquarium controller. I also have an apex on this system, and this is wired to the main apex in the in the uh, fish room. So that's in short life support shed. Um, we'll cover the other equipment, and stay tuned for the next part where we talk about the water chemistry. Hi, I'm Eric Cohen of Blue Life USA. Let me show you my product line. Clear FX Pro, filter media in a bag. Comes in three sizes for fresh water and salt water. New technology, new resins, removes phosphates, organics, and clarifies water. Safety Stop, quarantine treatment for fresh water and marine fish. Our Blue Vet RX product line consists of phosphate, aptasia, red cyano, and flatworm remedies. And our Watercolors Aquarium background comes in colors black and blue, available in four different sizes. Blue Life USA, aquarium products found in retail stores across the country. Or for more information, visit us at bluelifeusa.com. Hi there, my name's Jim Stein, and you know me as the LA Fish Guy. Well, I also wear a couple of other hats. One of them is the jellyfish tank called the Jelly Aquarium, and the third is myfishtank.com. 
I offer an entire line of acrylic aquariums ranging from rectangular to hexagon, flat back hex, as well as the custom curve front aquariums. There's also an entire line of stands and canopies ranging from MDF to pine to oak with a variety of different finishes available. And the website is even smart enough that you can calculate what the freight and crate charges to your location will be. That's myfishtank.com. This is part three on my house, uh, or on my system. Uh, we're gonna talk about water chemistry in any successful reef. Uh, some very key factors. I mean, aside from lighting, water quality and stability is a huge factor. Um, you know, I run a very well-controlled calcium reactor that helps me maintain my calcium and alkalinity levels. Typically, my calcium is around 450. My alkalinity is right around 8.7, which are decent numbers as far as I'm concerned, and my tank responds very well. For phosphate removal, um, I run a GFO reactor. I also run carbon reactor, and that helps kind of help with water purification or water quality overall. Um, I test regularly, I use for test kits. Um, I shouldn't say I test regularly, I test about once a month. Um, typically things are very, very stable in this system and since I have a very large volume of water, that helps maintain very good stability. Uh, temperature ranges anywhere from 75 degrees in the winter all the way up to 82 in the summer. I don't see fast temperature shifts. I used to run a chiller, I found I don't need one anymore and I have no issues with the tank hitting 82 degrees. It's done that for years now um, and no issue and it saves me on electricity. Um, obviously lighting is very important and clearly you know, I'm running decent lights, the tank responds very well to that as well. Um, as part of my filtration I run two refugiums, one of which has a deep sand bed, that one is under the main display. Um, then I have a display refugium here, it's kind of a catch-all, I just let it run amok. It's got some soft coral in it. Um, you know, I get a little bit of cyano, I get a little bit of hair allergy, whatever wants to grow in there, I let it grow in there because the idea is that it outcompetes the main display and the frag tank for nutrients and the end result is I don't have allergy in there, I don't have allergy in here, my allergy, you know, is pretty much relocated to here and of course I have macro in the main refugium underneath the tank. So with that, you know, between the two refugiums um, and the rest of the equipment, I am able to maintain pristine water quality and I don't have any kind of nutrient issues and while I have a very heavy fish load I feed these fish regularly and that provides nutrients and food for the corals and the trade-off is is that I don't really need to feed the corals they get their food from the food that I feed the fish and from the fish waste so the end result is a lot less labor for me and as you've seen from my equipment my system is very well automated and the beauty of that is I really don't have to do much as I said I test once a month my water changes are automated my top off is automated Heck, even my protein skimmer has a neck cleaner on it and it cleans itself. So all I got to do is drain the cup every week to 10 days. The only other maintenance um, on my tank is filter socks. I do run four 200 micron filter socks. So I change those out once a week. And uh, other than that, penny glass is the only other maintenance that I have. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you very much for watching. On the next episode, we're going to start taking field trips, so stay tuned to LA Fish Guys, or more importantly, LA Frag Guys. <laughs>